So welcome everybody. Uh, this is a session about the uh, SDK, SDK in the in the browser for Zephyr OS. Uh, I'm uh, Zachary Polso from uh, from Intel. I work in the uh, web technologies team there, and our mission is to enable web technologies in in all the computing platforms. And 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 today we're going to talk the Zephyr OS and 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 what we have done there. The Agenda for this talk is uh, uh, first we talk about the problem we are we are solving here, and then one solution uh, that's uh, the the core of the talk. Um, I'll do a live demo. Let's see how that one goes, and then uh, uh, we'll uh, <coughs> talk about the uh, the founding blocks, how the uh, the solution is put together. Uh, it involves a uh, couple things. Uh, first, the, the JavaScript engine running on Zephyr, and then uh, a new standard uh, called WebUSB, and then uh, the, the browser application itself. And if you have any questions, please interrupt me at any time. So really, what's the problem we're, we're trying to solve here? Uh, the, for an average developer, uh, IoT might be, you know, walk in the park, they know what they're doing, but especially for newcomers, uh, students who are new to the area, starting a new IoT project can be a tedious task. You have all these uh, boards and uh, cables and sensors and, and you really don't know you know, where to start. And uh, the <coughs> starting a new IoT project uh, typically involves, uh, you need to set up your development environment. Uh, you need to have all the sorts of uh, 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 different cables, the correct ones, some sensors, documentation, uh, sample code. You might want to <coughs> or need to update the BIOS and firmware and even your OS and all that. And uh, <clears throat> the documentation, at best, it's all over the place and maybe outdated and uh, you don't know which one is true and which one is not. So the solution uh, we're going to talk about today uh, is really a simple one. And uh, <clears throat> so the, the idea is that uh, what if this is all you need? So you need a board obviously, which you're gonna write your application. And then you would need a, a USB cable, in this case, and, and a web browser. That's it. And uh, <clears throat> so I'm gonna do a demo now, and uh, so you get a sense what it is. And then uh, I'll uh, uh, present the, the, the building blocks, how it actually works assuming that it works. Well, I'm going to talk about that anyway. Um, OK. So uh, I have a Chrome browser here. I have the uh, Arduino 101 uh, board, the Zephyr board. It's running Zephyr OS. I'll talk about that, what's, what's in there. But basically, it, it's a Zephyr board. I have the USB cable. And uh, I have a couple of uh, <coughs> sensors attached to that, but uh, more about that later. So when I plug in the USB to my PC, Mac in this case, the board will boot, and uh, <coughs> you will get a notification uh, there on the uh, corner, and says that, okay, web USB detected, and it's uh, telling me a URL where to go. So I'll just click that, and it'll launch <coughs> me the, the browser. What's As I said, okay. you'll, I'll, I'll get to the bottom of all these wonderful things <coughs> later uh, during the presentation. <coughs> but what it does is that uh, it'll take you to a, a web page, <coughs> which in this case is our IDE, or the SDK. It's just a web application. And uh, <clears throat> so <clears throat> I'll uh, uh, hit the uh, get started. It gives me the, uh, the IDE. 
and uh, <coughs> I hit the, uh, uh, the connect button. It tells me that, okay, there's a, there's a web USB device out there you want to connect. It says uh, paired because I have talked to this device previously. If it's a brand new, it just don't say that. Otherwise, the functionality is the same. I connect, so now I'm talking to the board. So this uh, uh, console there on the bottom, can you actually see it? Let's try to make it. A Okay, well, that's <coughs> bigger. So you have there on the bottom, you have an interactive shell. Uh, you can uh, <coughs> type some basic commands. So we have the file system there. Uh, you can eval uh, 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 JavaScript code there. And uh, you can reboot, and uh, there's all sorts of commands <coughs> available. Then you have your editor. And uh, you can start uh, uh, typing uh, some code here. So, uh, like, uh, console log hello ELC, okay? And when you hit the upload button, it'll copy the file to the Cephe board, it runs it there, and, and the console output, it's, uh, it's coming to the uh, <coughs> bottom of the uh, page. There's still, I mean, this is brand new, so <coughs> we need to clean up the console. So it, it's showing there's some uh, uh, protocol commands, but, the, uh, uh, but you get the picture. So we can uh, <coughs> then uh, try to do something to, to access these sensors. So <coughs> we can say that, okay, uh, I need some pins. And uh, here comes the, uh, uh, the node uh, require statement. Uh, so you can require modules. Right now, these modules are built in. And uh, so you say, uh, OK, it's an Arduino 101 pins. And uh, I'll try to access uh, some of the, uh, the, sen the sensors are hooked to the uh, GPIO. So I say uh, GPIO, I need uh, a GPIO module. And at any time you can uh, uh, test your code, you can upload that, see if there's any errors. And uh, <coughs> then, uh, uh, you can uh, write any JavaScript, like uh, interval, uh, set interval, function, and you say, again, let's log something from the loop, and you run this one every second, something like this. Okay, so <coughs> it'll start executing that on the target device. Uh, if you want to do uh, access the uh, uh, the hardware, I have a, a, a buzzer in the in the GPIO. So you open it. And you say, OK, the pin is, uh, what is the pin? The buzzer is in pin number two, right? No, that's the button. The buzzer is on the pin four. So then you say pins IO4, direction is out, OK? And uh, let's declare a alarm, which is false. And then in the, in the loop, you say buzzer right 
alone. Let's try this one. Nothing should happen. Error. Okay, <coughs> where's the error? Thank you. Let's try it again. Okay. So now if we change the alarm to toggle it here, you should hear something. Okay. So it's working. Let's kill that one. I was told not to do any LEDs, so <clears throat> it was an LED demo, but you get the picture. So, I mean, <clears throat> you, you, you can write code here, you can download it to the target device, and you can execute it there. I'll talk about the APIs we have, so you can do more, much more than the uh, GPIOs and the basic stuff. Uh, I can? Stop. Good. It's good to have the experts on the audience. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, that was the demo. So, how does it work? So, is this one working? No. Yes. Okay. It's better. So the way it works is that uh, on the left-hand side, you have the, uh, uh, the Zephyr. Then you have the uh, JavaScript runtime for Zephyr, which is on top of the, uh, the JerryScript. That's an open source project uh, that we have been working on about a year now. Uh, the Zephyr OS itself has now a, a web USB uh, a driver which we actually contributed there as well. And then uh, we have a part of the, part of the JavaScript runtime, a, a module called A-Shell. And, and what this A-Shell is, is, is doing, uh, among other things, is that uh, it's telling the web USB that, okay, these are the, the URLs that I support. And then when, when you connect the USB cable, the Chrome browser will ask that, okay, this is a web USB device. What are the, the URLs you want to go to? And, and, and that's <laughs> where it uh, uh, shows the, the dialogue on, on the uh, top hand uh, right corner. And, and you click that, it'll get, get to the uh, 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 internet where the uh, uh, application lives. It downloads the application to your Chrome browser and, and, and you have the IDE there. And, and this application, the web app, doesn't need anything from the cloud. It's just a static, well, not a static, but standalone web application. So you can run it even offline. We are <coughs> planning on adding the, the, uh, the offline support there. So you don't even need the, uh, the internet connection in the future if you have launched the, the application just once. So from there, uh, you have the, the connect button there. So you hit that, it'll connect back to the device, and then you have your data pa path ready. It's a serial connection on top of a, a USB. So you can send, receive anything you want. You, you build on top of that. So that's the, in a nutshell, the, uh, the operation. Any questions on, on, on this one? Okay, uh, so comparing the, uh, the development flow uh, on ma most uh, uh, embedded systems, uh, this is true at least for, for Zephyr uh, and for the Arduino 101. The ARM boards work a little bit differently, but uh, the, the cycle if you're doing native development is that uh, you edit your codes, you compile it, you link it, assuming that all your cross-compiling environment is correct. You reboot the device, you flash it, you reboot it again, 
and you run your code and see what happens. With the JavaScript development, the cycle is, is much faster. You just edit your codes, you copy, and you run it. And, and with these ingredients, the, the IDE, the web USB, and the JavaScript runtime for Zephyr, this is possible now. Then, next we'll talk about the, <coughs> one of the ingredients a little bit more detailed, which is the, the JavaScript runtime for Zephyr OS. By the way, this is the official beautiful, beautiful name for our project. Some people call it Zephyr.js, but uh, that's the way it is. So the purpose of that uh, project is, is to enable the JavaScript application development on Zephyr OS and to address the, the, the big, big JavaScript developer community, which already been building websites and mobile applications for decades. So they can use their familiar language, familiar tools also in, in the IoT. And as I demonstrated, the, the development cycle, it's, it's fast, so there's no flashing, just copy the files over. Uh, it is based on the uh, uh, Samsung uh, open source project called JerryScript, that's the engine, and an API layer, uh, which is the, uh, 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 the JavaScript runtime. Uh, we try to uh, mimic the well-known Node.js APIs, and when there's not available uh, uh, that type of API, we need to invent something of our own, and that's, that's always a, a struggle. So already today, uh, we can see some uh, application portability, so we can run the same codes on Linux on top of Node.js and, and on top of Zephyr with this uh, uh, JavaScript runtime. And uh, <clears throat> right now the, uh, the board, uh, I mean the, our runtime supports uh, two boards, uh, the Arduino 101, which is the x86 based board, and the Freedom board, uh, which is an ARM based. Uh, we understand that uh, we need to support more boards uh, and, and most of the Cephy boards uh, should have, uh, should run this runtime, but uh, it's all in the details to support every single uh, kind of a, uh, the pins and uh, uh, the, the external uh, peripherals there. Uh, so the way the uh, architecture, you know, high level, it was already in the in the opening picture, but uh, we have uh, unmodified Zephyr, so we don't we don't touch that. We just consume it. Uh, same goes with the Jerry script. We're just using it. There's no internal patches on top of that. We have actually contributed uh, some uh, codes uh, uh, there to, to make our life easier, but uh, they are just the upstream uh, versions of those. And then uh, comes the JavaScript runtime for Zephyr, which contains the, uh, uh, there on the left-hand side, all the API bindings, which actually allows you to access the hardware Bluetooth, network, whatever uh, is available on the device. Uh, we have uh, pretty nice build tools uh, <clears throat> so we can uh, just type make and it'll produce you the, the image. And uh, we have a lot of sample codes, demo applications. Uh, the APIs that we support are all documented and uh, yeah, it's, it's open source. More about that later. Uh, we have two modes in, in, in the runtime. So we have uh, uh, a runtime mode or, or a production mode, <coughs> which takes your JavaScript applications and, and convert that to a, a, a C string and embeds that to the uh, final Zephyr image. And, and, and then you flash that image uh, to your device, and it then picks up the JavaScript application and, and start executing that. And that's the only application you're gonna run on that configuration. Then <clears throat> we have the developer mode, uh, which is what you saw with the, with the browser IDE. 
And uh, that's where we can change the JavaScript application. So you can just copy over the uh, uh, application and replace that over and over and over again. And uh, <clears throat> so the way you distinguish these uh, two things is that uh, in, in the runtime mode, uh, you just type make and uh, it'll take everything. It takes your JavaScript application, the runtime, the JavaScript engine, Zephyr OS, builds everything and, and, and uh, out comes the, the binary and then <coughs> you, you, you flash it back to the device. And then if you say this magic word, uh, dev equals a shell, it'll leave the JavaScript application out. It adds other things like the web USB, the file system, and, and, and the shell. So you can uh, uh, <coughs> do this uh, uh, development mode. And uh, well, that's <coughs> basically a, a, a summary summary of the, uh, uh, how it works. The, the JavaScript APIs that uh, uh, we, we, we currently support uh, are listed here. I think uh, I have at least the majority of them. Uh, so there on the middle, we have the, the Zephyr OS APIs. And then on the, on the right-hand side, we have the corresponding uh, Node.js APIs. As I said in the beginning, we are uh, mimicking the, the Node.js APIs as much as we can. So the uh, 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 events, timers, console logging, uh, <coughs> that's available now. That's part of the core uh, APIs in the Node. Same with the buffer. And uh, then we have a BLE uh, API, so you can uh, do BLE applications, you can do Google's physical web uh, type of application, you can define GAT profiles all in the JavaScript. So that's pretty comprehensive API. And we modeled that uh, according to the uh, well-known uh, or widely used uh, Blenno NPM package. Uh, then we have uh, uh, all the uh, hardware APIs supported. I believe the SPI is still not support it, but all the others are. And there, the API design is, is kind of a problematic since there's no well-known standard there, and uh, that's <coughs> where we try to go with the Johnny 5 type of uh, APIs. That's the, uh, uh, the plan for the future. They are not today like that, but uh, that's, that's where we're heading. We also implemented the OCF uh, API that uh, Imad Susu was talking about earlier today in the keynote. So you can write uh, these uh, OCF compliant, uh, well not compliant, but at least OCF application sensors with JavaScript uh, with, with our APIs. Uh, then we have uh, couple of uh, W3C sensor, uh, APIs, namely uh, uh, sensors and performance APIs. Because as I said in the beginning, we are part of the uh, uh, web platform team at Intel, which mission is to uh, enable uh, web developers or developers to have harmonized APIs across all computing platform. And these W3C APIs, they are in the uh, in the, the browser API, so all the <coughs> applications that runs in your browser are using these W3C APIs. Uh, the latest API that we got uh, from Paul here in the audience uh, is the is the UDP, uh, which is according to the Node.js uh, uh, UDP core API. Um, we are pretty close in the in the file system uh, API. Uh, the next one uh, coming in TCP, HTTP, so you will be able to run actually HTTP server in your Cephyr device. Uh, Co-op MQTT has been discussed, but uh, uh, no actions there yet. Okay, so that's the JavaScript runtime. That's that's the the, the piece running on on the Cephyr board. 
So then a couple of slides about the, the web USB. Uh, somebody already uh, asked about that. So why it matters? Uh, USB is, is everywhere. So it, it is the de facto standard for connecting devices. It's fast, reliable, and in, uh, inexpensive. And uh, it can power your device, unlike, for example, Bluetooth. And there's a couple of advantages uh, over uh, uh, Bluetooth and other wireless uh, uh, technologies. And uh, I'm not going to go over those details. But one thing to uh, uh, <clears throat> point out here is that uh, we can make this uh, happen with the, with the web Bluetooth as well, which is a yet another uh, API in, in, in the browser. So that's a potential uh, future enhancement. So you can run the... Uh, IDE over Bluetooth to your Cephu device. So what the web USB is, uh, it's a W3C standard. Uh, well, it's not a standard yet. It's actually, I'll take that back. The, the way the, 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 the W3C standardization work is that the, it's, it's a long process. Uh, sometimes <clears throat> even too long if you ask, uh, uh, well, maybe me or, or, or somebody else as well. But anyway, uh, Google, uh, Mozilla, uh, they have been heavily pushing uh, this uh, web USB standard. And it's in the fairly early phase right now. It's, uh, in, in Google's terms, it's in the, in the origin uh, trial phase, uh, which uh, means that they are, they are planning of uh, uh, enabling it by default. And we are, this IDE, for example, is participating in that origin trial. So you don't need to do any tweaking in, in your Chrome settings. You just, it just works. But uh, uh, that's, <clears throat> and, and the way it works is that, uh, uh, I don't know the, the USB protocol that well, but there are these uh, headers and descriptors, what you exchange between the handshake. And uh, the web USB just defines uh, few uh, URLs uh, or few uh, new fields there where you pass these uh, URLs and, and, and things like that. And uh, there's a whole bunch of documentation and material available about the web USB. Security, also, of course, is, is one of the big concerns. And one of the couple of the main topics in, in the security area of the web USB is that the, uh, the URL that the device is advertising to the browser, it's only going to talk to that uh, uh, site. And it needs to be HTTPS. And, and only scripts from that site can access back to the device. Uh, that's a good question. This is actually, uh, Kenneth provided me this uh, material for the web USB details. Uh, will become, but are recommended and required for. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think uh, uh, the, <coughs> the, the way, yeah, it's, it's a good question. I cannot answer that right now. Sorry. Uh, and it works only in Chrome right now. Chrome is the only browser who has implemented the, uh, the web USB. So that obviously a limitation. Uh, but uh, Chrome is available on Linux, Mac, and, and Windows. And it works on all of those platforms. Did I? I think you saw uh, a Safari browser in my Mac. That must have been. Yeah, I mean, you cannot do that with Safari because Safari doesn't have the web USB uh, uh, API. 
So that is, well, let's go to the issues. So it's new, the web USB is, is new, so it doesn't come without issues. So on Linux, uh, most of the distros uh, ship with the uh, package called Modem Manager, and it's hijacking these uh, USB uh, CDC devices, which, which this web USB uh, device is claiming to be, and it is <coughs> that CDC device. And so you need to explicitly kill it. The, the modem manager is pretty aggressive in, in <coughs> acquiring those devices. Unless you, you blacklist your uh, vendor and, and product ID in, in, the, in the modem manager, so I think we want to be on that blacklist. <coughs> On Windows, uh, the earlier versions uh, before 10, uh, it needed some uh, custom driver you needed to download somewhere. It didn't work out of the box. Uh, now it, 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 it works, but uh, uh, Google is still having quite a bit of problems on the, on the Chrome on Windows, but uh, that should be getting better on Mac. On the other hand, I haven't seen any major issues. Okay, so then uh, the browser application itself, that the one that you see in, in the browser, so this one, uh, this is a fairly, uh, a bit more updated uh, uh, picture. And uh, what we are planning of uh, doing is actually uh, quite a few things. So you saw the editor, uh, you saw the console. On, on the right-hand side, we're gonna integrate a, a, a <coughs> module called Board Viewer, where you have a interactive SVG image of the boards that you're connected to. So you can mouse, <coughs> hover your mouse over, you see what pin is what, you can see a documentation of that. In the future, we might wanna enable a feature where you can just drag a pin there to the coding window, it'll give you the right code to initialize that. So it'll come a drag and drop exercise to write code. And uh, <coughs> then based on you know, what board you are connected to, it'll automatically load the proper board. Uh, that type of uh, plans, but uh, we, are, we are not there yet. So the, the application itself, uh, it's a browser only web app, so there's no server that you need to talk to. It's just a standalone app. Uh, the code editor itself, uh, it's a, a editor called Monaco, Monaco, however you pronounce that. It's from Microsoft. Microsoft is using that in their uh, Visual Studio code, the open source uh, version of the uh, Visual Studio. It's, it's a pretty robust, uh, full-featured editor. Uh, the console that you saw there, that's another external component from Google. So we haven't actually invented a whole lot of uh, things here because those are available already. The board viewer uh, that I showed, uh, that's a new, that's, that's an Intel uh, uh, code base. Uh, then obviously we have the, the web USB for uh, device communication. Oh, and actually one thing that I uh, <coughs> uh, forgot to mention is that uh, we have uh, these uh, multiple tabs. So you can see here that uh, they're on the uh, top. Well, you cannot really see it, but this is a tab. And uh, with this green button, you can get another tab, and you can connect that to another USB device. So if, you have, if you're developing a client-server type of application, you can write server code in one app, uh, window, client code in the other one, push the code to both boards, and see how things go. Uh, we also have a GitHub integration, so you can pull in your code directly from the, from the GitHub. And uh, it's, uh, it's done with the, uh, using an a Angular 2 framework for those who understand or are interested in uh, 
uh, front end uh, <coughs> frameworks. The, uh, <coughs> the IDE itself uh, is also open sourced. Uh, we open sourced that, I think, a week ago. So all the code for the browser application is available. And uh, the, uh, <coughs> the live site uh, where the actual uh, browser is, is running on top of web server, it's using the GitHub IO pages. So you can just directly go there to that site and, and, and you'll get the browser or the, or the IDE. Okay, so those were the three major ingredients for the, uh, <coughs> for the uh, uh, IDE. So then <coughs> I think I have uh, like uh, 10 minutes, so I'll, I'll just uh, briefly go over the, uh, the next steps and uh, you know, summary, and then I have uh, time for Q&A, but uh, you have a question there? Yes. So you do have to serve a component of some kind. Well, <laughs> okay, uh, okay, so uh, Node, Node, yeah, Node.js is not part of this project. But you need it. No, 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 no. Uh, and then you need a, a web server which is serving these uh, the, the, the web pages and the JavaScript uh, 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 scripts and uh, CSS files for the browser. But that's it. The, the thing that I <coughs> uh, me meant when I said that uh, it doesn't need a server means that the, 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 the web application, the IDE, doesn't talk to a, a build server or any other service in order to perform its task. Like if you're familiar with the, like the ARM embed, it's a browser application, but it's totally relying on the back end. So it, it's sending your code to the server which is building it, and it's giving you back the binary. So there's a strong connection between the, 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 the front page you see and, and the back end. What I'm say saying here is that we have no back end. It's just the web page. Is it going to be like that uh, going forward? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I agree. I think it's cool and we want to keep it cool so we have no plans of introducing any server uh, at least the mandatory server uh, requirements. Okay. Can, can you show the URLs again? Uh, this, uh, this presentation is uh, uh, available already online. But uh, so the, uh, uh, the well, github.com, 01org, zephyrjs-ide, that's where the code lives. And then you mangle it to the, uh, the way the GitHub does the I.O. pages. It gives you this type of URL where the live site is. Did you get it? OK. OK, so as I said, this is a pretty new project. There's a lot of work to be done. And uh, so what we would like to do is to have First of all, the board viewer available. Uh, have more boards there. Right now, it's uh, just the Arduino 101. Uh, the communication between the panels that I talked. Uh, then uh, it would be good to have the uh, proper API documentation to, to the Monaco editor, meaning proper the CFUJS, our runtime APIs. So when you type in, uh, you know, GPIO, it'll give you a GPI dot. It'll give you all the functions that that object supports. Now it's just some, 
I don't know exactly what it is, but it's not very relevant. So then you can, you don't actually, in that case, you need less and less the API documentation because the editor is, is giving you that. It would be easy to plug into other IDEs because uh, on the device side, it's just the USB and then the protocol on top of that. However, uh, the, the protocol right now, it's, it's really ad hoc. We need to define a proper protocol, document it, so then any project can uh, implement their own IDE on top of the web USB. It would be good if we can flash the device via the web USB. I don't know whether this is even possible, but uh, <coughs> so then people don't need to do the initial bootstrapping of, of the board. Uh, one pretty big uh, uh, limitation right now is that uh, because it's a browser application, you don't have access to the local file system. So, well, that's the way it is. There's <coughs> ways around that, but uh, we, we need to pick the collect, uh, correct uh, solution for that one. Uh, the web USB itself, it's undergoing some changes. The current uh, origin trial runs till end of March, and then after that, Google has already announced that they will, and the W3C working group has announced that they, they will revisit the API and uh, most likely <coughs> change that. Uh, one of the problems uh, we have with the Arduino uh, 101 is that uh, uh, the way we built the A shell is that uh, since, okay, let, let me take that, that back. In, in the production mode, the way we built uh, the runtime is that uh, it analyzes the JavaScript application and it only builds the modules that the application is using. So if you're using Bluetooth, it'll bring in the separate Bluetooth module. But if you're not, it doesn't build it. In the A shell, on the other hand, we have no idea what the application is. So we need to build everything there. And that's where we're running short on, on the ROM uh, memory. Uh, which we have 256K or a little bit less than 300K at the moment. And uh, this has been only tested with the Arduino 101. It would be good to uh, test and fix that uh, for other boards as well. And uh, as I said, it's all open. So we are really looking for contributions and users and applications, both on the runtime and the, and the IDE. Uh, so as a summary, uh, the browser-based IDE, uh, it's a easy to use, fast to get started uh, development environment. It should lower the entry barrier for, for uh, to start IoT projects, and um, we think that it's a it's a it's a really perfect match for uh, education classrooms, hackathons, demos, where you don't have a lot of time. So you're kind of a time box. You have you know 45 minutes an hour to get things going, and you don't want to waste time setting up uh, your environment. So with this one, you can just get up and running in in, in a couple minutes. Okay, so I think I have five more minutes for questions. Actually, on that last point that you mentioned, that it allows you know, for easy, sort of no learning curve you know, introduction. And that's definitely true. This looks extremely cool, very, nice, very nicely done. But do you see it crossing over to a serious work? So you know, when I have like, you know, a couple thousand you know, devices, like, is there a way for me to cross over into that? Because I could see how somebody who is a hobbyist, you know, tinkering with Arduino could benefit, could benefit from it, but I cannot really see how somebody who is more serious with that. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a good question, and I, I think uh, JavaScript in the in the IoT will uh, have this challenge for for years to come, and uh, the 
but there, there should be no reason for that because. Well, I, I'm actually not picking on JavaScript as a language. I'm just sort of almost asking a question about the workflow, right? Okay. Because the workflow that you presented is ideal again for somebody who is tinkering a little bit. Okay. Device, yes. But a workflow for somebody who has to manage a couple thousand devices is very different. Well, no. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. Yeah, but but then uh, the way uh, then then you know once you're done done with your your, your tinkering, you should switch to the uh, uh, so-called pro production mode, and 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 you 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 said okay now it works let's go to you know some trial let's flash uh, you know a couple hundred devices, and and that's where you bake in your application into the image and you just flash that. We've actually, uh, we have a hackathon tomorrow, Wednesday afternoon, which unfortunately is already full. But there uh, we are kind of a, uh, demonstrating and, and trying out these uh, different uh, uh, workflows. But the, the production mode, I mean, these guys, they, they flashed, the, uh, I think we have uh, 35 boards and it took, what, a couple of minutes, five, 10 minutes to, to flash them all. With, with the production image, so what, once, once, once you're done, you just keep copying it, so, yeah. Okay. So, how much room is left for my JavaScript application after JavaScript and the JavaScript? Yeah, it's, it's, it's another uh, good, good question. Uh, uh, the vague answer, it, it depends. It depends on your application, and uh, we have been running, uh, you know, demos where we have uh, uh, BLE doing the, the physical web uh, uh, advertisement and then uh, a GAT profile, which is accessing a, a few sensors, uh, and we haven't hit a, a ROM, uh, sorry, RAM limit uh, with the Arduino 101, which contains 55K uh, RAM, so... But uh, once we, st if we, if we start running a, you know, we have uh, TCP and HTTP, and we start running, a, you know, a web server there, and somebody sends a big JSON blob or something, I'm sure we're going to run out of memory. So, I don't know. It's more board specific, though. I mean, yeah. We have the Freedom Board, for example, which has a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. The I think the, the answer, uh, the question wa was oh, about RAM. ROM. RAM. Sorry, RAM, RAM, yeah, RAM. I mean, they're both, they're both yeah. a problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know, I mean, uh, what type of application you need to, to run over the, uh, the RAM limit? Yeah, on, on Arduino 101, yeah. and so. So also on Arduino 101, do you support the pattern matching engine? Yes. Yeah. We don't have the bindings yet, but uh, maybe later this year. Okay. Anything else? All right. I think we're done. Thanks.